Over the last decade, vector-borne diseases like malaria and dengue have become endemic to Mumbai city. Every year, the megapolis experiences a surge in case of dengue fever. In 2023, nearly 4,400 cases of dengue were reported by the Health Department of BMC, the highest in the state of Maharashtra. In 2024 itself, between January and May, nearly 285 cases of dengue have already been reported. Forty-eight-year-old Chetan Joshi still remembers the day his daughter was infected with dengue. He has been living in Dharavi all his life with his family but has never known the symptoms of dengue until his daughter contracted the virus a few years ago. ट्रीटमेंट <laughs> Dengue is an acute viral infection in humans transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Over the last 20 years, there has been a significant increase in the incidence of dengue in India, especially in urban and highly populated areas, including Mumbai. Mumbai is a mega city with a 13 million population. Even during the daytime, we have uh, up to 15 million because of the work-related travel from you know all other places uh, around corporations and districts which comes to Mumbai. Um, so population density where the mosquito don't have to travel far to get the next meal or the bite. So that's an uh, important factor. Uh, another is the water sanitation uh, you know, conditions uh, where a lot of people are staying in slum and slum-like area. And because of that, uh, you know, there are water storage practices and uh, they store the you know water and they keep it open then also the sanitation so in and around the houses they don't maintain the cleanliness so so these are uh, you know even the smallest uh, play you know you will see the container if it is there which can hold the water so during the rainy seasons uh, the breeding can also take place in that so these are some of the practices and these are some of the factors you know which leads the city to a very high risk and in high rises you know actually we have seen that the people are not much aware that you know the vector can breed into their own houses and the surrounding like the terraces or uh, it is in the premises of the societies or even into the galleries you know where they keep the plants and all so these are some of the practices of the people which also you know leads to a more uh, f a risk uh, to have the vector breeding in their own uh, premises this is the jija mata nagar community in south mumbai a location that was identified as a high-risk area for dengue in 2023. We also have the Every week, insecticide officer Chetan Chobal and his team of civic workers go on their rounds. They survey homes and rooftops in the neighborhood for any objects that can allow water stagnation, turning them into potential breeding grounds for female mosquitoes to lay their eggs. In slum areas, they keep tarpaulin on the rooftops so that it becomes a waterproofing measure for them. So, if there is any sagging portion in the tarpaulin, the eggs will be laid in that. And the water will dry off, but the eggs won't die. They survive desiccation for one year. So, next monsoon, even the early mon I mean pre-monsoon showers, the larva will come out. So, the cases of dengue are also reported just prior to monsoon and then after monsoon. It's like Anopheles and Aedes have areas divided for them, I mean seasons also divided for them. It's like that. Chetan and his co-workers are part of the local government's official disease surveillance team. The life cycle of the mosquito is egg to larva, larva to pupa, pupa to adult. Three stages are in water. The egg, larva and pupa are in water. Only the adult is outside the water. It is terrestrial or aerial as you can call it. So. Our focus in the urban areas is to control the mosquito breeding in the larval stages itself. 
Post dengue and malaria are no more a monsoon related health hazard for the residents of Mumbai. According to Dr. Daksha Shah, who leads the health program for the civic department, climate change is a big factor in making this a recurring health crisis. Because of uh, global warming, what's happening is there is, you know, constantly rise in the temperatures and there is fluctuation of temperatures, but there is, and also there is a lot of humidity in the air. Now, also there is an intermittent rain, untimely rains. So, all these factors and then we have very close proximity to the sea. So, these all climatic conditions, uh, you know, they, they actually are very, very conducive for the growth of uh, mosquitoes and the breeding of the mosquito vector. And that is why uh, is, you know, this, this disease are very uh, prevalent uh, in the city. In addition to climate change, experts believe what is further aggravating the problem is rapid urbanization, often without proper planning and due diligence. First of all, let me tell you in Mumbai, malaria is man-made. Because all, all the breeding locations for malaria, or the breeding spots for malaria, mosquito, are man-made. There is not, not a single, you know, natural breeding habitat for the malaria mosquito. Malaria is associated with construction in the city of Mumbai at present. Previously, it was not like that. But now, uh, because of the, you know, boom in the construction industry, uh, there are nearly 6,000 projects going on. I mean, construction as well as infra projects going on, where water is required to be stored for curing purposes. So that becomes one of the major workloads for our we have to go and treat all these sources on a weekly basis. So, manpower is required, insecticide is required. In this South Bombay Housing Society, civic health officers are going door to door explaining the symptoms of dengue and malaria to residents. <laughs> Their task is to document symptoms of suspected cases across the 24 wards in Mumbai and to send their blood samples for early diagnosis and treatment. So fever cases are identified proactively. So we, we, we find out the fever cases and our CHVs, ASHAs and our primary healthcare doctors team, they go house to house in those areas and they bring more fever cases and they test and even on the spot we have malaria teams which is there and they take the slides on the spot in the houses and if it is found positive they are been given treatment also simultaneously the pest control officers and their team they find out the vector breeding around these houses and they destroy those vector uh, breeding which is there so simultaneously there is a control also and they keep the area under the observation in 2023 the public health department had expanded its reporting centers from 22 to 880 this helped bring down the mortality rate despite the surge in cases. But the challenge continues, Dr. Sharma tells us, primarily because of mosquito behavior, known to be one of the most adaptive parasitic insects that are now growing to be insecticide resistant. First the chemical in India we use DDT. So now we are getting DDT resistance everywhere. So now this government of India has stopped DDT use in our country last year. 2023, they stopped this use of DDT. Now, other insecticides we are using uh, at present in the in the country. So slowly, slowly, this is a this is a character of particular insecticide or larvicide that will be resistance will be there to to mosquitoes. So this is a insecticide. Suppose uh, five, six years, seven years, or eight years, maximum ten years, you can use. After that, resistance will be there against the mosquitoes, so it will not affect it. A complex problem of this magnitude harks back to the solution of source reduction. At Dharavi, a new innovation called the EcoBio Trap is currently being tested to tackle the problem. We have a container, you see, you saw all of them around in Dharavi that we have installed courtesy BMC, uh, that you just add water to the container there is a sachet inside which is an attractant so attracts it to breed there and then there is a killing ingredient inside which ensures that those adult do not emerge out from that so the force multiplier gets reduced and this way you would have broken the chain in a very simple manner by 
a device made from paper paper mache just as that has an attractant and a killing ingredient that just works by adding water so far nearly a thousand of these eco bio traps have been set up across the kumbharwada cluster a community of potters in dharavi one eco bio traps covers an area of around 400 to 450 square feet it will last for one full month one full 30 days in one particular trap at this um, at this point of time we are seeing anywhere between you know 1000 to 2000 eggs okay now you have to understand that these eggs you know making them you know they are going to result into adults right and they are going to multiply and multiply and multiply so if one mosquito you know th that multiplication factor in terms of mosquito is easily going to be you know 10 crores easily from just one trap now you multiply that by you know the 38000 traps for an entire year and then look at all of that spectrum so that's you know infinity number The startup claims that this is the first biodegradable and truly green device as they have transitioned from using a chemical based insecticide to a biodegradable adhesive liquid called silicon PDMS which causes a thin layer or surface tension on the water and traps the mosquito larvae before it can grow into an adult. We are getting rid of the insecticide and inside of that we are giving the surface tension surface mechanism right which basically like the insecticide kills it this does it also in a similar mechanism but that is chemical free insecticidal free uh, by just creating a surface on this layer and then depriving the larva and the pupa of the oxygen right both the products visually look the same you can't discriminate it it's really the action because everything else is the same but the surface tension one now makes it the world's first 100% green red zero insecticide zero pesticide product for breaking the chain or like in green ovi trap if you will so far these eco bio traps have been set up in six different communities across mumbai as part of the pilot initiative with the municipal corporation while eco bio traps seem to have great potential they are still in the early stage of innovation incubated by mumbai civic corporation they will be tested out for a year to assess and quantify their effectiveness see 11 questions ho gaye then you say yes ये ड्रम्स के लिए ऐसा बांध के रखो ओके सो एसी का अभी एसी के नीचे ट्रे रहता है सो देयर आर 18 क्वेश्चंस इन दैट इट्स अ प्रोएक्टिव काइंड ऑफ दिस थिंग यू नो देयर इज अ शॉर्ट फिल्म इन द बिगिनिंग सो इट शोस यू द पोटेंशियल ब्रीडिंग स्पेस प्लस व्हाट नीड्स टू बी डन इफ यू हैड आंसर्ड ऑल यस इंप्रूविंग पब्लिक अवेयरनेस इज इंपेरेटिव इन कंट्रोलिंग दीस डिजीजेस The Mumbai Against Dengue app for instance was launched by the civic body in 2022 to enable public discourse and interaction. So this is this is not applicable to me I say not applicable. But even as awareness grows and innovations are discovered locally Dr Sharma former head of vector control program tells us how entomologists who are vital to any disease prevention campaign are absent from the workforce in the country. at present as national river no entomologist is there when we were working in the program so suppose there is a outbreak in particular state like like manipal in karnataka state we have to run immediately to cut the transmission in that city or to decrease the cases that was the that was the practice actually now now who will who will go there so this field experience or field visits are most important in that but when there is a problem of outbreaks or dengue problem chikungunya problem malaria problem or outbreaks or death are there in the country so regularly we were we were going so now that practice is not so this human resource at regional level state level national level that is
Thanks for watching Eco India. If you like the story, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to scroll.in on YouTube.